okay that if you were angry with me how is he to want me back well because i don't have that anger forever i love you now i just didn't like what you do and you know there is a difference between many people don't understand and we parents we need to understand and sometimes we use those words almost contradicting words we use them love and hate in one sentence my boy i love you but i hate what you're doing you see that i hate the people you are running with i hate the gang you have joined but i love you and that's what god is saying yes i don't like what you did but i love you i love you and i'm going to pass by your transgression come back unto me the promise of restoration in verse 19 he will turn again he will have compassion upon us he will subdue our iniquities and thou wilt cast all their sins into the depths of the sea if anybody hears backsliding as you come back this morning, every sin you ever committed, no matter how terrible, everything will be forgotten in Jesus' name. I thought you'll say good amen. amen. Jeremiah chapter 3. Jeremiah chapter 3. We're looking at verse 20. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 20. Surely, as a wife treacherously departed from her husband, so have you dealt treacherously with me, O house of Judah, says the Lord. And look at the terrible word used there, treacherously departed from the Lord. And then in verse, in verse 21, a voice was heard upon the high places, weeping and supplication of the children of Israel. For they have perverted their way. That means they have gone away from the Lord. They perverted their way. And they have forgotten the Lord their God. They have forgotten the Lord their God. Any hope for them? Any hope for you? Of course, yes. Verse 22. Return ye backsliding children. Not that that's it. That's it. Return ye backsliding children. And I will heal your backslidings. Have you seen the backsliding there? Plural, plural, backslidings. You know, there are some people that feel, I'm even ashamed to go back to God and pray anymore. And tell God, oh Lord, have mercy on me. Because 19 such and such, I backslid. And then I came back. And then 2000 and something. I went back again. And then the other time, can you imagine that just falling and rising, falling and rising? I'm even ashamed now to go back to God and say, God, I'm here again. I'm looking for mercy. I'm looking for restoration. I'm looking for your forgiveness. Come back. It says, I will heal your backslidings in the plural. Behold, we come unto thee. We're going to come to God. For thou art the Lord our God. When you return to the Lord with all your heart, He'll give you the grace to remain stable. You'll be stable for the rest of your life in Jesus' name. In Jeremiah chapter 24 verse 7, the promise of restoration to God through Christ. Jeremiah 24 verse 7, here it tells us, I will give them an heart to know me, that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God, for they shall return, they shall return, that means they were with the Lord before, then they went away, and then they will return, for they shall return unto me with their whole heart. As you are coming back, you will not give part of your heart to Satan, and then you want to give the remnant to God. That will be insulting God. 
you will not give parts of your affection unto the world and then be given the remnant unto the almighty God, the creator, the redeemer, the one that loves us with everlasting love. You bring your whole heart, your whole affection. You say, Lord, I'm so sorry that I ever withdrew any sin, any love, any affection from you. I bring everything back intact. Now I'm going to love with all my heart, all my soul, and all my mind. That's what the Lord is expecting. He says, you seek me, and you will find me when you will search for me with all your heart. We're looking in at Hosea chapter 14. Hosea chapter 14. Reading from verse 1, Hosea 14, verse 1. O Israel, return unto the Lord thy God. Return. For thou hast fallen by thine iniquity. Take with you words and turn to the Lord. Say unto him, take away all iniquity and receive us graciously. Take away all iniquity and receive us graciously. And you see how he is even teaching us how to pray. You see, I want to come back to God. I don't want I don't want to tell God I'm dumbfounded. I'm just I'm just dumb. But my sin, my backsliding shuts my mouth up. Okay, if you don't know what to say. Take with your words, verse 2, turn to the Lord and say, this is what you have to say, take away all iniquity. That, that's all you say, oh Lord, iniquity stops my mouth, sin shuts me up, it embarrasses me. I don't even have to face you again, but oh seers, taught me how to pray, take away all iniquity and receive me graciously graciously as fall i will heal their backsliding i will love them freely for my anger is turned away from him that means then he has favor now and he has mercy and he asked the lord to bring you back into fellowship and relationship with him Ezekiel chapter 18. In Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 30, Therefore, I will judge your house of Israel. Everyone according to his ways, says the Lord God, repent, turn yourselves. You see how God started? God said, judgment is coming, judgment is coming. And judgment is running fast. And if you remain in that wilderness of backsliding, judgment is running so fast, it will catch up with you. But, repent. Don't go a step further in your journey in the wilderness. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions. So iniquity shall not be your ruin. Cast away from you all your transgressions whereby you have transgressed. And make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? We will not die. We shall live. Hey, because it's so simple, just turn around and say, Lord, thank you. You've been waiting for me. I was the one delaying. You wanted me to come back so many years, so many days ago. But now I come, I come. And then it says, For I have no pleasure, but start it to you. In the death of him that dies, says the Lord, God, wherefore turn yourselves and live ye. Turn yourselves and live ye. That's the promise. In First Peter chapter 2, verse 25. First Peter chapter 2. Verse 25, we were, this past tense now, we were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of 
our souls. We're in the past, a sheep going astray. We departed from the Lord, but now he says, we're now returned unto the shepherd and the bishop of our souls. And as we return, the Lord will receive everyone. I said the Lord will receive everyone. Now we come to point number three, the plan of reunion with God's children. It is wonderful as we come back to God. Sins are forgiven. The iniquity is taken away. The condemnation is gone. In the courts of heaven, there is no remembrance of anything we ever did wrong. We're now in favor with God. But now, we come, we're still here on earth. And we still have to live with these brothers and sisters here. And the reunion with God's children, that's part of a great relationship. Do you remember the prodigal son? He went away to the far country. And without us living, he spent everything that is God. Then he came to a farming, a local farming, a personal farming that he came to. And then he came to himself and he said, How many hired servants of my father are eating? They have enough to eat and to spare, and I'm dying with hunger in this place. I'll take the first step. Whatever will happen, I'm going to do something. I will return. I will go unto my father. I will say to my father. The father loved him. The father wanted to give him mercy. But you know, the father is not going to leave where he wants to go to the far country. The child knew the way back home. And we all know the way back home. We know enough Bible to know the way back home. And that's what I've just told you. The mercy of God waiting for you. The love of God waiting for you. The compassion of the Lord that faileth not waiting for us. And we know the way back home. So he said, I know the way back home. I'll go back home. And he came back home. And then his father, he was trying to confess his sin. He was trying to, I'm not worthy. He made me a hard servant. And the father did not even allow him to finish the confession. Embraced him and, and loved him and changed his clothes. He came into fellowship with the father. And then the senior brother, the elder brother was coming. He was hearing the celebration and the rejoicing. He asked somebody, what's happening back at home? Oh, they said, your younger brother has come back. And your father is so happy. Is that so? Then, now you need to reestablish the fellowship between the elder son and the younger son. That's very important. We need to be in fellowship with one another. How does that happen? The plan. The plan of reunion with God's children. In 1 John chapter 1. 1 John chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 1, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life which was for the Father, and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. We declare it to you so that you will have fellowship with us. Our fellowship is built on a declaration. Our fellowship does not hang in the air with no support, with no foundation, and with no basis, with no pillar. There is a declaration, what we have heard, what we have seen, 
what we have experienced, what we have known, this word of life will declare it unto you that you will have fellowship with God and have fellowship with us. And it is always like that. Fellowship between children of God must be built on scriptural foundation and declaration. Fellowship between husband and wife built on a foundation, on a declaration. Fellowship between us and our fellow brother, our fellow sister built on a foundation. We cannot just be hanging the fellowship in the air with no support, with no declaration. That which we have seen and that which we have heard, declare we unto you that she also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness. And then it says, if we say, we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness will lie and do not the truth. That means then as we're going to have fellowship together, you first of all, you get into fellowship with God. We want to make sure that you have fellowship with God so we can have fellowship with you. Because we have a commitment not to fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. We have that commitment already. And if we're going to fellowship with anybody, there must be an evidence, there must be a fruit and proof that he is in fellowship with God. That's the basis of our fellowship together. And if you say you have fellowship with him and you walk in darkness, you lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. If you walk in the light, that's the basis now. That's the plan. That you're walking in the light. You have come into fellowship with the Heavenly Father. And now we can build a relationship with you. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, the Son, cleanses us from all sin. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. The plan of reunion with God's children. Verse 12. For as the body is one, and as many members... And all the members are of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body. That means the Spirit of God recognizes your fellowship with the Father. And then He takes you and He immerses you and puts you in the body. When there is the evidence in our heart, the testimony in the heart of your brother, the testimony in the heart of your sister, that the Spirit of God has brought you, and now He embeds you, He, he puts you, and He immerses you, baptizes you into that one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be born or free, and have all be, have all be made to drink into one spirit. When there is that evidence, when there is that reality that you have taken, you have the spirit of God. You know what Romans chapter 8 verse 9 says, if anyone does not have the spirit of God, is none of his. You must have been made to drink into that spirit. So you have the spirit, the spirit of God, the spirit of truth, 
the spirit of holiness. You have come into fellowship with the Father and He has imparted unto you.